These are my new secret Japanese street food spots in Asakusa. So I'm back in Tokyo's Asakusa area to take you on a street food tour of all my favorite places and secret spots that I've never shared with anyone before. But before we start, if you guys want to help support the channel, then definitely check out the Tokyo merch as well as my Paolo from Tokyo Hot Sauce. And if you guys have any questions about Japan or your Japan travels, then definitely check out my Discord community. That said, let me take you on this hidden gem adventure. Asakusa is a traditional style downtown area of Tokyo, known to Japanese as a shitamachi, with its nostalgic Edo period vibe. The main area can be a bit touristy, but there are many local hidden gems in the back streets, some in plain sight, but buried between the countless shops. It's hard to know from the outside looking in what are the real deal holy fields, so I thought it's time to share with you my recent heavyweight Asakusa food hitters. Let's start this one in the Hanayashiki area. Okay, so we are kind of in the back streets right now. It is a beautiful day, but it is super hot. It's probably like 36 degrees out right now, 37. I don't know, it's still pretty hot. Number one, aged baked sweet potato from Emo Pee Pee. So if you're looking for the sweetest baked potato in Asakusa, then look no further than this spot. This shop uniquely serves three month age Japanese sweet potatoes, which creates an undeniable natural sweetness. Further enhanced with a slow three hour bake, producing a taste unlike any other potato I've ever had. Sweeter than a home cooked meal waiting for you after a long day of work. Look at this, I got that baked sweet potato brule. Look at this. What does that remind you guys of? It looks like to me like an abalone. You can see that they have little granulars of sugar. Whoa, it's hard. Don't, 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 don't. It's hard. Oh, I broke it open. Look at that. Look at all of that cream just busting out. Can't wait to take a bite of this. Wow, the sweet heavens have parted with this. So what they've actually done here is they put custard cream on the sweet baked potato and then they flame broiled it, brulee it, and made it just crystallize into this candied little sugar coatings. It's kind of like a luxurious cream. It tastes quite expensive. Like the most expensive cream you've ever tasted in your life. You do get like some of that sweet potato taste to it, but if you scoop towards the sides right here, you have some of that baked potato right there. Oh. Their sweet potatoes here have been matured to a point where that 50% of the sweet potato is actually sugar content, which is quite high. Dude, and let's taste this kind of brown brown skin. What color do you guys think this is? Red? Purple? Hmm. Yeah, the skin? Also sweet. Oh, it's sweet. This is kind of like the Jeff Bezos of sweet potatoes. It's rich. Okay, so this next spot is hidden behind this small alleyway that I'm entering in right now. And if Tony the Tiger had a saying for this place, it would be, it's grape. Number two, matcha tiramisu crepe from Kotobuki Seian. This shop is hidden in the way back of the back streets and is quite difficult to find. But if you're a matcha lover, then you've got to risk it all for this spot. My tip is to look for the cat painted shutter and then you'll know you're just one turn away from a crepe shop unlike many others in the area. As it uses a premium Uji matcha crafted solely in Kyoto. So first of all, you gotta buy your ticket right here. <laughs> I got the Yasaka crepe, which is their standard matcha tiramisu crepe with a matcha powder sprinkled on top. This is beautiful. This is like the matcha moon. If a moon was made out of matcha, this is what the surface would look like. Take a bite of this. Mm -hmm. Wow, that is good. So creamy. Oh, the matcha is strong in this one. But it has the matcha flakes on top and then more matcha inside. Just like from the first bite, you can see how much cream there is. The crepe is made right in the store, super fresh. The matcha is quite bitter. It actually brings out the sweetness of all the other ingredients. So like the mascarpone has this gentle sweetness. So sorry, I just realized we shouldn't probably be where we were. 
so we decided to relocate just here. It is street food, we are just on the run here. So what's interesting about this place is that the owner is originally from Kyoto. All of the menu items have... Oh, we're just right next to... We even move closer to the amusement park, so there might be some roller coaster um, noise in the background, so sorry, apologies for that. And all of the menu items that they have here, they're all names of the cities in Kyoto. So this has some mascarpone inside, sponge cake, matcha cream, black beans, and lemon jam. Oh, it's supposed to have lemon jam. I can't find the lemon jam. Look at all of that matcha for you. Oh! Mmm! The black bean also has kind of like a gentle sweetness to it, but more so, like the texture is quite interesting. It has some like resistance to your bite. You know, you expect like a mushy bean taste, but it's actually more of like a dry wafery taste. But let's just taste the bottom side of it. Mmm, that's where the lemon jam has been hiding. Had to go all the way to the bottom to get the lemon jam. And it is such a beautiful day. I love just being able to walk around, take you through these areas, have kind of a street food adventure. This is awesome. Number three, curry pond from Komugi no Dore. So this spot has a curry pond with an unbelievable Captain Crunch. Let me show you. So this shop is already quite popular and can be found throughout Japan's countryside areas. But since they recently opened up a shop here right behind Hanayashiki and their crispy fried curry bread is just so damn delicious, I had to make an exception and include it in this street food video. <laughs> Look, I got the curry bread. It's still hot. Here we go. We got the zaku zaku curry pan. Let me just take it out. Whoa! This is one of the crispiest, crunchiest curry pans I've ever had in my life. Let's take the first bite. Oh! Wow. Here on the outside, the first thing you taste is these little crouton things that make it so, so crispy. It's almost like the level of potato chip crunchy where you just like every bite is just so crispy. But let me just do like the real opening. Whoa! Look at all of that curry in there. This is just so scrumptious. Mm. Bread itself has this a sweet goodness. It's super fluffy and airy and it kind of has like mochi mochi like shokupan taste. You have a very like Japanese style yellow curry and inside of the curry you have some beef and pork and then there's lots of vegetables in here. It's not like too spicy. It has maybe just a little bit of spice. It's more like on the sweet side. Their custom curry pond is also swinging for the fences as it's freshly fried on the spot after you choose what ingredients you want to put inside. The less crispy brother from another mother. So I quickly want to tell you about the awesome people at Boksu who also sponsor this video. I know that many of you have already subscribed, which is awesome, but for those of you who don't know, they provide a premium experience of Japanese snacks, candies, and tea pairings delivered to your front door. They work with family businesses all over Japan and deliver a new theme of authentic treats each and every month. First time users will get a Seasons of Japan box, and after that, you'll get a theme box like this one. This month's theme is Full Moon Rising, which celebrates Japan's moon viewing festivals. As families gather to reflect on the changing seasons, Season, give thanks and pray for good health while enjoying a full moon. My favorite this month is the Ski no Minamo Milk Manju, which you can try for yourself. So get $15 off your own authentic Japanese subscription snack box from Boksu by using my code PALO and link in the description. Number 4, 350 yen ramen at Menmaru. So this spot is one of the best kept secrets for its value in Asakusa, so we couldn't miss hitting up this spot. Let me show you inside. Do I need to say more? 350 yen ramen! Just inside of the Hisagodori shopping street, this local shop is hidden way above its pay grade. Their light shoyu ramen is perfect to finish off a daytime drinking session. After buying a ticket, hand it to the guy and wait at a seat until you're called. 
This is 350 yen. That's about $2.30 for this bowl of ramen. You have some onions here, you got menma, you got sprouts, chashu, you got the nori. Let's have some of the broth real quick. There's a lot of umami in here. Well, this is amazing. The dashi is quite light. I do get that shoyu taste, but you can taste like a strong pork broth in there. A meaty broth. Let's just taste some of these noodles right now. This is actually a lot of noodles, especially for just a little over $2. And I love the size of the noodles. It's not super, super thick noodles. It's just like the perfect size. Let's see how firm it is. That's like the perfect firmness. The chashu itself isn't too bad. It's not like the biggest chashu in the world, but again, this is value. The memma is pretty soft, and this nori pretty soaked in by now, so I'm assuming it's gonna be pretty soft as well. Oh, it's soft. Let me just throw a little bit of this pepper in here. Throw some ryu in here as well. Have another bite. Mmm. Oh, this is great. But if you do want some kick in your ramen, then that is the perfect thing. And for those of you asking, we're doing all of this in one day. Number five, Il Onigiri from Unana. So if you're looking for an onigiri spot, this place is delicious. This spot is actually near the crepe shop which I introduced earlier. It's relatively new in the area, but it's quickly gained in popularity, so much so that it often sells out, so it's best to purchase a ticket as early as possible in the morning. One thing though, a success getting more strict these days with walking and eating since there are so many tourists and food shops, so it's best to eat at the shop's designated eating space when possible, like this one on the same street. Okay, look at this. I got the unagi hitter right here. Like it kind of looks like my tongue. <laughs> Let me just take a bite. Mm. Eel is just so buttery soft. The juices from the unagi kind of melt all in your mouth. Some eels you'll get like super, super crispy. On the outside, this one isn't that crispy. It more just kind of like melts inside of your mouth. The tare that they use, the sauce that they use is quite sweet, but it goes so well with the sancho peppers that they put on top. Gives it a little bit of a spicy kick. And also the rice, it's been grilled, so it has kind of like that crispy outer shell, but not like too crispy. And then it is still like quite sticky compared to like, you know, normal rice that you would probably eat. And you can see that it is pretty soaked in. You can see that the rice has all of that beautiful, sweet unagi sauce. As far as the preparation goes, before they actually grill the unagi, they'll steam it first so that it gets nice and fluffy. That's why you probably get that melty sensation when you take the first bite. I just love unagi. It is just rather expensive when you eat it. Um, so 600 yen is quite a steal. That's like less than five bucks. Number six, Mentai Mochi Okonomiyaki Pancake from Tsurujiro. So this spot has them hot grill hitters that I definitely need to show you. This next shop is located on the east side of the Nakamise area, and it's the perfect lunch spot to rest up after touring the area while also filling up on your typical local shitamachi food. A teppanyaki grilled Japanese style crispy moist pancake, Okonomiyaki. They use a dashi from chicken and vegetable cooked for three days. Look at this, the flame broiled mentai mochi cheese. Let me just break down what's going on. So you have a cabbage batter mixture that's been compressed into this little cylindrical goodness. In the middle, they have some cheese and they have some mochi. Brings it all together in the middle, kind of holds it together. And then on top, they have mentaiko, which is flame torch on the surface to give it a slightly crispy shell. And then on top it off, you have the nori seaweed. It's just like another good flavor that adds to the whole entire package. Let's take the first bite. This is what I'm talking about. Kind of like a nice buttery taste to it. The first thing you taste is the mentaiko on top and then I think it's pollock roll. It has kind of like a tangy taste to it and just the richness from the mentaiko just covers it all up. Mayonnaise is high must go. This one, yeah, mochi. And I just confirmed there is mayonnaise in here. And then you have these little bits of mochi. It has a really nice like rice and stickiness, little chunks all throughout, kind of like little surprises. 
And then in terms of the, the texture itself, it's really airy inside. So like a bite, it just kind of just sinks in and you don't get like a lot of bite back to it. It's kind of like a light, fluffy pancake, but with a savory topping of the mentaiko. And this place also has some other interesting menu items. So if you don't want this, also have some okonomiyaki with some onions on top. They even have a katsuobushi okonomiyaki, which they actually just like freshly shred just right in front of you here. This is the beauty of the street food tours. There's so many places in Asakusa that you can go get food and you just never know where to go. And this is why I want to take you to all of my secret favorite spots because you know sometimes you just don't know. I mean, I haven't done a video like this in quite some time, so I wanted to show you my favorite spots. So these are my new street food spots here in Asakusa. If you guys like this video, help me out and hit that like button. Again, if you guys want to help support the channel, check out my merch or check out my Paolo from Tokyo Hot Sauce. You can go to Paolo from Tokyo Hot Sauce.com. And if you guys want to see more videos like this or anything related to Japan, hit that subscribe button and the bell button. I'll catch you guys in the next one.